What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., and everything you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, stimulus check update, and daily news. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so, so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And especially if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, make sure to subscribe here today. As I said, it's free to do so. We're at 399,000 subscribers. Help us reach 400,000 subscribers here today because today is my birthday. Uh, that's right. Today is my birthday and uh, help us reach 400,000 subscribers. If we could get there today on my birthday, I would definitely appreciate it. It's been a goal of mine. Uh, I've been trying to reach here and uh, today's my birthday. So if we can make it today, uh, it would be an extra special birthday present to me. So uh, thank you guys so much. And let's jump right in here to today. Uh, what's going on here today? And we got a lot to cover here today. Got several different things. The price of gas is skyrocketing. What President Biden says in uh, regards to that, as well as the Russia actually invading Ukraine now. And this new stimulus checks actually going out to um, many, many people. I'll be going over that here as well in this video. So here we go. Uh, yeah, you can see here from the Wall Street Journal, the price of oil is Quickly approaching almost $100 a barrel. It was up over $96 a barrel here yesterday. Uh, the highest prices it's been in almost a decade because of uh, Russia actually invading Ukraine now. Um, it has officially happened here, and they have gone into several different parts of Ukraine here. And uh, remember that Russia is the world's second largest producer of oil and um this has already sent the price of oil and gas skyrocketing here, not just in the U.S., but across the world as oil is traded here on the, the open markets here. And um, natural gas prices are surging as well as, as well as oil and gasoline. Yeah, and Germany has halted the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that goes from Germany to Russia. Germany is a NATO, in NATO a NATO ally. They have cut off Russia from that pipeline there. So the entire EU, the European Union, is going to sanction Russia as well and limit them or in, in some cases entirely shut them out of financial access and financial markets and uh, not trade or buy oil and other uh, significant things here from Russia. So this is going to completely shut Russia out from many other parts of the world, including the United States and all other NATO countries and the European Union. Of course, Russia is in Europe. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of sanctions on Russia. And one has to ask, is this going to be worth it for them? Is this going to actually be worth it for them? It's it's a it's a rational question, um, and the question is is that these sanctions, financial sanctions, could go on for years. Who knows how long? And the question is is what is the fallout going to be after that? That's the real question is is what is going to happen here now going forward? But this is hitting home here for the U.S. and for us Americans. Uh, the price of gas has hit uh, a 2022 high and has hit a multi-year high as well. Many, many states are reporting highs here for many, many years as well. Um, the price in California in many uh, areas are hitting near or at $5 a gallon. And uh, many experts say that the price of gas could go up significantly higher here, even more so. President Biden here said yesterday that he pledges to use every tool at our disposal to limit gas price hikes after imposing new sanctions on Russia. Here's what President Biden said. As we respond, my administration is using every tool at our disposal to protect American businesses and consumers from rising prices at the pump. As I said last week, defending freedom will have cost for us as well, and here at home. 
We need to be honest about that. But as we will do, but as we do this, I'm going to take robust action to make sure the pain of our sanctions is targeted at a Russian economy, not ours. We're closely monitoring energy supplies for any disruption. We're executing a plan in coordination with major oil producing consumers and producers toward a collective investment to secure stability in global energy supplies. This will be a, this will blunt gas prices. I want to limit the pain the American people are feeling at the gas pump. This is critical to me. In the last few days, I've been in constant contact with European leaders, including with Ukrainian President Zelensky. Vice President Harris met in person with the leaders in Germany over the weekend in, at the Munich conference, including President Zelensky. At every step, we have shown the United States and our allies and partners are working in unison, which he hasn't been counting on, Mr. Putin. We're united in our support of Ukraine. We are united in our opposition to Russian aggression. And we're united in our resolve to defend our NATO alliance. And we're united in our understanding of the urgency and seriousness of the threat Russia is making to global peace and stability. Meanwhile, President Biden also did recently um, send out some relief here to um, some people here. President Biden, as you can see here from Forbes, President Biden cancels $415 million of student loans. But Senator Bernie Sanders says cancel all of the $1.8 trillion of student debt. This is just the latest kind of round of a student loan debt cancellation. Here are the details. The latest news for student loan forgiveness shows that Biden canceled $415 million of student loans for more than 16,000 more student loan borrowers. Biden has now canceled nearly $15.5 billion of student loans, which is the most of any president. His latest student loan forgiveness benefits student loan borrowers who attended for-profit colleges. Here is the details. You can see here from the U.S. Department of Education. Um, Education Department approves $415 million in borrower defense claims, including for former DeVry University students. Uh, yeah, more... Uh, claims approved related to findings for DeVry University and Westwood College, ITT Technical Institute, and Minnesota School of Business Globe University. Yeah, you can see here, President Biden has canceled over $15 billion of student loans. Um, this is not for everybody. It's it's for certain people, including schools that have defrauded people, schools that have closed on people, students with uh, permanent disabilities, and people in the public student loan uh, school forgiveness program. Those ones I know about for sure. Bernie Sanders responded with, good, now cancel the remaining $1.8 trillion dollars for the other 45 million other Americans who are still drowning in student loan debt. Bernie Sanders uh, responded in a tweet to President Biden canceling the 415 million of student loans. Yeah, there's a lot of Democrats who want to see um, 10 to $50,000, or in some cases, all of the student loan debt cancellation for 45 million Americans. There's about one in six adults that have student loans um, as adults. And in some cases, I covered that story the other day. Uh, you could see here this from this Sean McCoy, this guy who posted on Twitter. This is this is kind of the problem with student loan debt. He says, I'm 27 years old. I have one hundred twenty thousand dollars in student debt from an undergraduate degree. He says, I've been paying $970 a month, almost $1,000 a month for five years. And of the nearly $60,000 he's paid in five years, only $2,000 of that has gone towards his loan. So this is the problem. Well, he says, I ask again, how <laughs> the F was this ever legal? Or how was this ever legal? Hashtag cancel student loan debt. So this is the problem here with... with um, loans like this is that they they go on forever 
and he's paid almost sixty thousand dollars, and fifty eight thousand dollars approximately of it went to interest, and only two thousand dollars of it went to principal. How was he ever going to pay off one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in debt? And this is why you hear stories, a lot of stories, of people that pay on this, and they're they're they, they're still paying on it in retirement. It's it's really sad. It's really sad. Um, I mean, this is just a classic example of why people want to cancel student loan debt because it's a very burdensome. And I get the argument that people say, well, you know, you knew what you were signing up for, right? And I mean, we're talking about, you know, 18 or 19 year old kids that say, you you know, pe people tell them you got to go to college. You got to sign up for this $100,000 worth of debt. And... Um, I mean, in all fairness, I mean, we paid off my wife's student loan, so I don't, I don't have, I don't have any bad feelings towards like paying off student loan debt for you know the government stepping in and helping these people out. We paid off my wife's student loans, um, but I still think that they should help these people out. Now, remember that um, the government already spends all the tax dollars they take in. Okay, so whether they give out stimulus checks to people who need it, need it, whether they give out SNAP assistance to people who need it, whether they give out Social Security raises to people who need it, whether they give out um, Social Security raises to people who need it, whether they give out child tax credits to people who need it, whether they give out student loan debt cancellation to people who need it, whether they give out other types of debt forgiveness to people who need it, which I think is a very real possibility in the future after all this student loan debt cancellation happens. I think there could be other type of debt cancellation. Because remember, student loan debt cancellation used to kind of be a fairy tale. It used to be um, years ago, people used to think, people used to laugh at student loan debt cancellation. They used to say, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. It's a, it's a joke. And... Um, Look at there's been fifteen billion dollars of student loan debt cancellation done in just basically a year. Uh, Biden's been in a president for a year, and honestly, there could be a lot more coming. A lot of Democrats are pushing for ten to fifty thousand dollars of student loan debt cancellation for everybody with student loan debt cancellation, and that's a very real possibility because President Biden has said that he is uh, for. He's, he has personally said this himself, uh, doing up to $10,000 of student loan debt cancellation. And if that happens, I also could see a very large push for, well, what about the other five and five out of six adults? There could be an uh, other type of debt cancellation for everybody else. Um, because this is just kind of, um, you know, what the Democrats are all about. They're just kind of like equality for all, right? And um, if you think that student loan debt cancellation would never happen uh, years ago, well, you, you see it's happening. I literally just showed you the headlines, right? Um, so other types of debt forgiveness could happen as well. So the IRS can, or the government and the IRS could easily do, easily do other types of debt forgiveness like tax lien debt forgiveness, Mortgage debt forgiveness, because the IRS actually, or the government actually owns the majority of mortgage debt forgiveness through government programs like uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Okay, uh, those are actually government-backed programs. They can literally just waive por large portions of uh, government mortgage-backed debt. There. Okay, tax debt forgiveness, literally just owed to the government. They could just waive it. OK, uh, with the stroke of a pen, an executive order, for example, just like these uh, student loan debt cancellations are literally just just waived. OK, they're not going through Congress. They're not being uh, signed off by the Senate and the House. They're just being waived. OK, just just done, just signed off on by the education secretary. Uh, just poof, gone. OK, um, so other types of debt that are owned by the government can be done as well. OK tax liens, taxes, and mortgage debt, okay? But other types of debt, like credit card debt forgiveness, medical debt forgiveness, or uh, any other type of debt forgiveness could be done as well. But that would probably have to be done, if it's not owned by the government, it would have to be done, like credit card debt forgiveness, um, would probably have to be done through a stimulus package or other types. But if you, when you think about it, 
that can easily be done through a stimulus package. And when we think about how bad inflation is and how many people are behind on bills, 63% of people are behind on bills right now or living paycheck to paycheck. This is a possibility of something that could happen in the future. And I mean, think about how, how crazy the world is right now. We've had the government has sent out three stimulus checks in the past two years just to stimulate the economy. The government has sent out monthly checks to 60 million children just because they were born. Okay, uh, the government literally has sent out child support to 60 million children called the child tax credits. Okay, the government has waived 15 billion dollars worth of uh, student loan debts just because. Okay, so if you think that crazier things haven't happened, I mean, there's literally just think about those things I just mentioned, right? Uh, we've spent trillions of dollars in stimulus. Okay, uh, all these things. If if you would have asked if the government would do this 50 years ago, people would have looked at you like you were crazy, okay? Absolutely just crazy, right? Uh, if people would have asked you if there was a worldwide pandemic 50 years ago, I mean, <laughs> even, even five years ago, right? Uh, if people would have looked at you five years ago and said, everybody would be wearing masks and getting vaccines and the, the country would have shut down. I mean, <laughs> we're just living in a, a complete different time, right? Uh, and I mean, we've sent out three stimulus checks, child tax credit, monthly checks. I mean, we have states sending out stimulus checks all the time. You've been watching my show. In fact, here's another one. Check this out. Uh, here you go from the Boston Herald, Massachusetts, to begin sending out $500 checks to thousands of low-income workers. Literally almost on a weekly basis, I have new checks like this either being announced going through state legislature, trying to be passed, or literally being sent out here, multiple different states just all the time. Um, good on the states, right? We have so many different states doing this here. Um, it's not just California anymore. California is considering another stimulus check for 2022, but we have so many different states, cities, and counties uh, doing this here in 2022, and it's only February. It's only February. We're going to probably see a lot more here going forward. Uh, here's the details on this one. There's a lot of people getting this check. Check this out. The, quote, first round, first round of one-time $500 bonuses will soon be mailed to thousands of low-income workers, the governor's office announced. Quote, our administration has worked quickly to design the parameters for the program with plans to efficiently begin distribution of these payments by the end of March. This program will support these workers who served our communities, especially early in the pandemic, Governor Charlie Baker said in a statement. Charlie Baker is a Republican. The state's um, pandemic essential employee premium pay program, say that 10 times fast, will distribute $460 million to an estimated 500,000 workers. Whew, that's a lot of people, 500,000 people. The initiative relies on federal virus relief dollars and was initially intended to reward low-income workers who manned the front lines at the height of the pandemic. But the eligibility criteria released by the Baker administration on Tuesday included no such parameters. The lawmakers gave the Baker administration wide leeway to develop the program criteria, and the governor's office said its aim is to ensure this critical support is provided quickly to deserving workers across the Commonwealth. Baker had promised to get the funds out the door by the end of March when he signed the program into law. Eligibility is based on 2020 Massachusetts tax return. Anyone who earned at least $12,750 working at least 20 hours a week for 50 weeks at the then state minimum wage of $12.75 per hour and their total income did not exceed 300% of the federal poverty level are eligible for the payments. So basically, if you worked at least part-time through the pandemic, it looks like you're eligible. 
That puts the maximum total income for a single person at 38,000 if you're not over the income limits and 78,600 for a family of four. Married filers can be eligible provided that each independently qualifies. Anyone who received unemployment benefits in 2020 and frontline state employees who have received or are in line to receive a one-time bonus of up to $2,000 from the state are not eligible to collect the hazard payouts in the first round of funding. Yeah, so if you got a one-time bonus of up to $2,000, I think that's maybe a back-to-work bonus that they maybe distributed um, recently. Lawmakers last year called for bonuses ranging from $500 to $2,000. Their plan would have awarded one-time payments to grocery workers on the front line. So yeah, they're going to begin sending these out here in March. Again, this is just one state. I'll keep you up to date here on everything. If you've been watching my channel, there's more and more states doing this. Uh, just California is expected to do another stimulus check this year. Um, just off the top of my head, it's a, it could be as high as $1,100 this time uh, per person. And uh, again, California's stimulus checks goes out to like 27 million people. Uh, that's a lot of dough. That's a lot of people as well. Um, almost every single state has like a billion dollars or more at this point um, from stimulus money. And uh, I'll keep you up to date here as many states are considering stimulus checks here. Uh, we got the whole Russia, Russia situation here and a lot more going on here. I'll also have a special guest here for you later on uh, today here for my birthday. So make sure to stay tuned here today. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe right now to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. This way you won't miss out on new updates, uh, new videos that come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're at 399,000 subscribers. So help us reach 400,000 subscribers. So click subscribe right now. Click the like button. Thanks for watching, guys. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see all the new stimulus programs that were just announced here recently. I did a real big video on it. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.